Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and a while back I did a tutorial on dripping text. And while that piece covered guides and the use of the pen tool, I never thought the final result was that epic. So here we go again. This time we're doing dripping text with a new and modern twist. Gone with the pen and in with the rectangles. And in the process, we're going to learn about creating outlines, shape building, use of the bevel points, and more. On top of that, we're going to level it up using gradients and by adding strokes using the appearance window. This is so easy and so fun and has a ton of applications to step up your Illustrator game. Let's go. All right, first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and create a new file. Our new file is going to have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, and if we scroll down, let's be sure that we are in the RGB color mode. The reason is, is we're creating this piece for screen. You're creating it for print. Obviously, swap on over to the CMYK color mode. All right, let's go ahead and create. All right, before we get started, we want to switch our workspace on over to the Essentials Classic workspace. The way we do that is we go to the top right-hand corner of our screen. Let's click on Switch Workspace, and let's select Essentials Classic. The reason I select Essentials Classic is because it gives me all the tools right on screen so I don't have to go around looking for them. Quite handy in my mind. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to use Smart Guides. In order to enable Smart Guides, let's go to View, scroll down to Smart Guides and select, or of course, we can select Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using the bottom center of our screen to highlight key command recommendations tips and tricks, and hotkey recommendations. With that being said, we're building this piece on a PC. That means any key command or hotkey recommendations that I use control for, if you're using a Mac, all you need to do is select command instead. Again, command equals control. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with our piece. The first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our type tool, and let's click anywhere on our artboard, and let's write cool off. Note that the two words are separated by a hard return so they occupy separate lines. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of our type. We can do that two ways. First way is we can triple click on our words and that will select all of them. Or of course we can hit control A and that will select our type as well. Next thing we want to do is we want to open up our character window. We can do that a couple ways. The first way is we go on over to our right sidebar and click on the A that opens up our character window right there. Let's go ahead and close that. Or of course we can go to the top bar and select window, type, character, or let's enter control T. Now that our character window is open, let's go ahead and change our type size from 12 points to 150 points. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and swap our type style or our character to a more full bodied sans serif. One I've selected is called Peace Sans. If you don't have Peace Sans, you can go ahead and download it for free from fontsquirrel.com. You can go to fontsquirrel or you can go to the link directly below. Once we've got our character set, let's go ahead and change our character style to all caps. The way we do that is we'll click on our right menu element on our character window, and let's go ahead and scroll down and select all caps. Perfect, right there. Next thing we're going to do is with our type tool still selected, let's double click on the word off, and then let's increase that size until it matches the width of the word cool above it. Now we can do that a couple ways. The first way, of course, is we can go over to our character window and arrow up until our type size matches the width of the word cool just like that. Let's go back down to 150. Or of course we can use key commands to do that as well. Another way to do it is let's press our shift and control button and let's press the greater than symbol along with that repeatedly and notice that we can scale our type size up in two point increments. I think 220 points for the word off looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's go ahead and deselect our words. That looks pretty decent. One thing that isn't working, however, is that the words are too far apart. So let's go ahead and fix the letting. 
Let's grab our type tool. Let's double click on the word off. And then let's go ahead and decrease our leading to 220 points. Write it in. Let's grab our selection tool and let's deselect. That looks pretty good right there. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool, let's select our type, and let's go ahead and align our words to the center of our artboard. All we need to do is go to the top bar and let's select our align center element horizontally and vertically just like that. Now, if you don't see your align elements, you can open your align window and use them that way by selecting window, align, or shift F7 right there. Once we've got our text set, we don't need to edit our text anymore. Instead, we wanna work on our type as editable shapes. So how do we change our type to editable shapes? Well, it's a piece of cake actually. All you need to do is right click on the word cool and off, and then scroll down and select create outlines. Of course, you could also use the key command, which is shift control O. You can see that our letters have been converted to editable shapes by switching to outlines. You can do that by pressing Control Y and notice again that our characters are now shapes. Let's press Control Y to exit outlines. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now that we've got our letters set, what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and start drawing rectangles to create those drips that we want to make. How do we do that? Piece of cake, all we need to do is zoom in on our piece, that's good right there. And then let's grab our rectangle tool and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to draw rectangles off the bottom of our shapes. Those rectangles can connect to the shapes beneath it, or of course, just be left hanging. With that being said, we wanna keep our rectangles a similar thickness. So let's get started, I'll show you what I mean. There's my first rectangle is about that thick. All my other rectangles are going to follow that same thickness. That looks pretty good right there. And let's keep going right here. This time around, I'm gonna connect my F to my O just like that. And let's get another drip from my O about just like that. I'm gonna arrow this on over to the center. Let's go ahead and keep drawing our rectangles. Let's move down and focus on our bottom word. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Let's bring the whole artboard into view. The way we do that is we press Control-0. Let's grab our selection tool. And let's deselect our last rectangle. All right, now that we've got all of our shapes created, what we want to do is we wanna unify those shapes. Now there's two ways we can do that. The first way is let's go ahead and use the Shape Builder tool. Let's use it on our first set of shapes. When we do that, let's go ahead and drag across all of our shapes just like that, and let's grab our Shape Builder tool. Once we've got that selected, let's drag across all the shapes that we wanna connect. Now, if we go to Outlines, you can see if we deselect our shape, that our first set of shapes is now connected. Now, a quicker way to connect the shapes is as follows. All we need to do is select all of our shapes one more time, Let's go to Window and let's select the Pathfinder tool. Alternatively, you can select Shift Control F9. Once the Pathfinder window is open, let's go ahead and go to the topmost shape mode. If you hover over it, you'll select Unite. Note straight away that all of our shapes now have been united. That looks perfect right there. However, if you exit Outlines, you'll notice that the piece is quite jagged. How are we gonna fix that? Let's well, piece of cake. All we need to do is grab our direct selection tool and let's round all of the rectangular ends. Let's zoom into our piece. Let's grab our direct selection tool. Let's select one of our rectangle ends and let's drag the bevel points all the way in just like that. We'll deselect and you can see how that works out. Now we're going to do it rectangle by rectangle because we've set our rectangles to slightly different widths. If we do it all at one time, you'll notice that some of our rectangles don't get that perfectly round end. Let's go ahead and take care of all our rectangle ends and let's get started again. Notice that we're dragging across the bottoms of our rectangles. Let's 
go ahead and bring the entire artboard into view. And that looks pretty good straight away. One thing, however, it doesn't have that fully drippy effect because the areas coming off our letters is not completely rounded. Let's go ahead and round those edges. The way we do that, let's go ahead and zoom into our shape one more time. And now let's navigate to those connections. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to press my space bar and I'm going to click and drag to the bottom of my letters just like that. Next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and go to outline so we have a better view of our anchor points. Now that we've got that, we need to select the anchor points that we want to bevel. We can do that two ways. The first way is we can select an anchor point, hold our shift key and select the next anchor point just like that. From there, we can click and drag until we've got that beveled corner the way we want it. Another way we can do that is we can drag across anchor points just like that and then click and drag until we get that exactly how we want it. Let's go ahead and do that for all of the anchor points connecting our original shapes to our rectangles. Let's go. Looks good, let's go ahead and bring our entire shape into view. And let's go ahead and exit outlines. That's perfect. All right, let's go ahead and level this up. How are we gonna add color to our piece? Well, it's a piece of cake. All we need to do is grab our selection tool. Let's select our shape, double click on our fill, and let's swap our colors to anything we want. In this case, we're gonna take it to a mid blue. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks really good. Let's level this up by adding a gradient to this piece. How are we gonna do that? Simple, let's select our shape one more time. Let's double click on our gradient tool. This will open up our gradient window. Let's go ahead and select our most basic gradient. That's the white to black gradient right here. And then let's go ahead and change those colors. The way we do that is let's double click on our white gradient slider point. And let's change it to a simple yellow. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and double click on our black gradient slider point. And let's change it to a bright red. That looks pretty good right there. Once we've got that done, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure our gradient moves through our entire shape. The way we do that is let's go ahead and click on our artboard and then let's go to the top of our shape approximately right there. Let's click and drag down from top to bottom to make sure we've got a perfectly vertical drag. Let's hold our shift key and then let's release. Once we've got that done, let's grab our selection tool and deselect our piece. That is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and keep leveling this up. This time around, I wanna add a black stroke. How are we gonna do that? Let's select our piece one more time and let's open up the appearance window. We can do that a couple of ways. The first way is to go to our right sidebar and open up our appearance window right here. Let's close that. Another way to do it is we can go to window, appearance, or of course, select shift F6. All right, once we've got our appearance window open, let's go to the bottom left hand corner and let's select add new stroke. Once we've got that new stroke added, let's go ahead and increase that stroke thickness to 18 points. That looks pretty good. However, it's got sharp corners and it's in front of our type. How do we fix that? To bring our stroke behind our type, all we need to do is click and drag it beneath contents just like that. And then to round our corners, all we need to do is click on the word stroke and then select round joint. Let's go ahead and click on our artboard and let's deselect our shape. That looks fantastic. Now, what if we wanted a white intermediate stroke and a colored outside stroke? Well, let's keep going with it then. So how do we add another stroke? All we need to do is select our shape. Let's go back to the appearance window. Let's select our stroke and let's select duplicate selected item. Once we've got that, we've got a stroke appearing directly beneath our original stroke. Let's take that bottom stroke 
And let's increase that thickness from 18 to 36. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and click on our top stroke and let's change the color from black to white. And let's click one more time on our artboard to deselect our shape. That looks really good right there. Let's go ahead and finish our piece out. Let's select our element one more time. Let's select our bottom stroke and let's click on it one more time. And let's go ahead and change the color from black to a mid blue. Looks good right there. Let's go ahead and click on our artboard, click off of our shape one more time. And that looks really, really good. Let's take one more step. How does that look in front of a black background? Let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool. Click on our top left corner of our artboard, drag all the way down to the bottom right hand corner. And then let's change our fill to black and our stroke to transparent. Once we've got that done, let's grab our selection tool. Let's right click on our shape, select arrange, send it back. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. That is exactly what we're looking for. And that is how you create a modern dripping effect. With that in mind, we are done. Congratulations, now that we're done, think about different ways you can use this technique to step up your Illustrator game. It can be easy or it can be complex. Now, with that in mind, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like, I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.